Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome back and uh, thank you very much for tuning in. And inshallah, today is uh, I'm going to discuss about uh, the ideal uh, Ramadan uh, routine that you can do, right? And uh, of course, Ramadan is not just any like any other month. It is the month of devotion. It is the month of self-discipline. It is the month that you have to tweak, change a little bit your routine, right? And uh, of course. Uh, it is uh, is it is helpful to to have a daily Ramadan routine, right? So that we can uh, sort of like you know balance uh, uh, worship uh, between worship, uh, ibadah, and rest. You need to rest as well, of course, and uh, and other activities, working and all that. All right? Of course, on top of that, you don't overexert yourself, you know, in doing physical activities. Because as you know, you are fasting unless you have no choice. And those who are serving the national service uh, in Singapore, for instance, there is no choice. You know, be it Ramadan or not, there is no uh, you know exception for them. It shows that uh, you, we have to have a strong uh, conviction, strong uh, mental to go through. You know, uh, all these uh, difficulties, all uh, all these tasks assigned to us, especially those who are serving the nation and. Uh, and what they do is, in fact, the act of ibadah, serving the nation, the love for the nation, and serving them, it is an act of ibadah. You, if you are working to support your family, it is an ibadah. You know, and ibadah, the meaning of ibadah is not just, uh, it's not just salat, saum, fasting, uh, giving sadaqah, giving alms, and so on. But in fact, the meaning of ibadah is much, much wider. All right. So, here is an example of the ideal Ramadan daily routine right based on the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam of course the first thing first we start our day with the pre-dawn meal it is known as it is known as uh, suhoor or sahur right and to provide energy uh, for the day and it is important of course um, to uh, to consume something that is uh, needed such as something that has you know uh, in a glucose a little bit because you're gonna you're gonna be on empty stomach without food and drink for the next 12 between 12 to 14 15 16 hours right so something like dates is good uh, even uh, drink water you know you have to drink plenty of water you have to hydrate yourself you know uh, this this is to prepare yourself for uh, for for the day so sahur is tasahharu in the hadith tasahharu fa inna fihi al-baraka aw kama qala rasulullah sallam consume or eat your sahur because in it in the sahur is is barakah is blessings right and then on top of that of course after sahur you do after you done your your uh, fajr prayer take some time you can take some time to uh, recite al quran even better if you can memorize them right some part of it uh, make it a daily routine in ramadan to recite the quran let's hope that this routine will you know uh, will continue even after after ramadan and then not only reading but you know spend some time to uh, tadabbur what is tadabbur basically is to understand to ponder to think to go deeper into the meaning and then how can we apply in our life right there's no point in reading quran without understanding right this is this is important guys what is the point of one memorizing quran but knows nothing about the meaning it's just like parrot I'm sorry to say that I may sound harsh, but uh, what is the point of understand uh, read the Quran but knows nothing about the meaning? How do we, you know, uh, practice what what is in the Quran if you don't understand the meaning, right? So it is your responsibility, you know, for every reader to understand what they read, right? And then after you read Quran in the morning, you take a nap, you know, rest. Uh, you need some uh, energy, right? And then, of course, those who are working, you know, uh, in the office, you know, you have to attend, engage in the work and study activities until the midday, right? Until the the midday. And then, um, of course, uh, after that, you can, can pray your zohar prayers, you know. Um, you of course try to pray in jamaah and all that. Then you can continue with your work, you know. You can rest and prepare for your iftar. All right, of course, in uh, I'm talking about uh, the context of uh, Singapore and maybe probably Malaysia and Indonesia as well in Southeast Asia, that uh, over here the breakfast the iftar is rather I would say you know uh, extravagant, 
you know they spend lavishly you know buying food that they don't need actually you know when you are fasting 12 13 14 hours how much can you eat right uh, uh, to be honest you know just a bowl of soup or bowl of porridge and you are full right i mean at least for me um try our best to minimize our spending right on on, on food and Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam usually breakfast with simple simple thing you know a date and then because that is a staple food there in in middle east maybe here perhaps a simple thing like you know some uh, i would say some kueh uh, you know uh, some dessert or perhaps something something simple something nourishing you know and drink plenty of water remember saho uh, iftar is not the end of fasting you know it's not the end of your activities you have to remember you still have maghrib to pray you still have the isha you still have the taraweeh and so on so break your fast you know take it easy rest relax you know pray the maghrib and then um, of course after after that you can enjoy a little bit you know a slightly heavier meal after maghrib you break your fast with dates and water pray the maghrib and enjoy your meal after that then prepare for your isha and taraweeh and of course the word taraweeh means uh, rest right resting raha you know it's a raha it's the rest so um, there is no point if you uh, overexert yourself you know uh, of course uh, we don't discuss whether it is 8 it is 23 it is 36 you know we don't discuss that because every one of us have their own understanding their own their follows certain, certain mazhab certain uh, uh, you know rules and all that um, but the point here is that take your time take your time all right um, uh, spray the taraweeh you know focus on it you know and then um, try your best to uh, recite the quran whatever you have memorized read it in your taraweeh read it in your in your taraweeh prayers and then after taraweeh you, you may have some time right before you sleep uh, you can read quran again because remember ramadan is the month of quran ramadan uh, is the month of al al quran and remember on the 17th of ramadan that night is considered as the night of nuzul quran where the, for the very first time quran was revealed to rasulullah uh, uh, through sayyidina jibril alayhi salam and remember ladies and gentlemen brothers and sisters al quran was revealed in the month of ramadan hands uh, Ramadan is the month of Al-Quran Right uh, Ramadan is the month of Al-Quran First And then Ramadan is the month of fasting You understand that So uh, The Ramadan or the month of Quran Comes earlier Than The the commandments of uh, of fasting uh, to for, for the Muslim And then you read the Quran uh, Try to reflect on the meaning Tadabbur And then if you can memorize it It's even much 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 better And then take a rest You know rest and then uh, for a few hours, if you are able you know, to wake up before dawn, right? Preparing for your, for your sahur, try to uh, pray the, the, the late night prayers, the tahajjud, you know, uh, the night of uh, visual prayer. Okay, you can pray uh, tahajjud, you can pray sunnah tawbat, you can pray sunnah uh, mutlaq and many other sunnah as well, you know. And then, uh, of course, by following this uh, Ramadan, a daily routine, inshallah, uh, we can like sort of like you know uh, balance you know our worship and our activities you know while conserving our energy for the long day because Ramadan is is uh, is a long day of course uh, without food and drink and so on and so forth so uh, it is important uh, for us to remember that this uh, this routine is ideal routine right uh, may not be possible for everyone to follow due to you know uh, differences of uh, basically their work and and so on so forth of course now everybody can follow this uh, exactly so the key is that to strive to do your best you know to seek blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and forgiveness uh, throughout the month because this is the month of forgiveness it is the month of for forgiveness it is the month of an najatum in the nar you know salvation from from hellfire so uh, this is the month where the bab yani the door of heaven is open and the door of hellfire, the gates of hellfire will be closed. So take this opportunity to do your best. Inshallah, till we meet again. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum 
ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته